Okay. Well, I'm really delighted to welcome our next presenter. We are going to be uh, hearing about the topic of numeracy training for everyone. And uh, Ovidio, sorry, Ovidio is going to uh, introduce the session from the University of Derby. So thank you very much, Anna. You. Uh, I would like uh, to thank the previous speaker as well, uh, because uh, I'd uh, like to uh, tell you that uh, the best student we have in the third year in the mathematics course at the University of Derby, has cerebral palsy, and he's doing a fantastic job. He's the hardest working student, and he's doing really, really well. So I think he benefited so far from support along these lines. So I think you are doing a great job on this. Uh, my presentation uh, is linked to a project which actually started in this building five years ago. I'll, I'll tell you at the right time. Um, I'm working uh, at the University of Derby for a number of years. Uh, we are focused uh, on uh, teaching quality, I think above everything else, student support, student employability, careers support, uh, and we are supporting a wide range of learners. And uh, I had to teach large classes of students. I had to teach mathematics. I'm a mathematician, as you will see. Uh, I had to teach large classes of students who didn't want to be there. So I had to become familiar with items like uh, mathematical anxiety. Then in order to uh, provide inclusive learning, uh, flexible learning, meaningful learning, assessment for learning, I had to uh, build a range of uh, resources. I had to build e-assessment. And then this got, got me uh, in, into this project where I work with the technology company to develop uh, digital support for mathematics but this is mathematics for everyone, not just the mathematics uh, for STEM students. And uh, this is, um, I will show you the impact of not having this support in place uh, at the society level. And then also how we try to support the learners in our university, and then also many learners abroad. Now, why do we need to develop skills at the university level? So the Office for Students has many conditions of registration. So B3 is uh, students provided with opportunities to develop an understanding of and necessary skills to demonstrate good academic practice. So this is what something that we uh, providers have to uh, offer. D1 is organization provides opportunities for all students to develop skills that enable their academic, personal and professional progression. D and uh, I think that's D3. Uh, organization provides opportunities for all students to develop skills to make effective use of the learning resources provided and uh, to uh, uh, provide the use of digital and so, um, so to make use of digital and virtual environments. Also, there are uh, many institutional success measures which are linked to skills development. So relative performance in the test five scores, so related to NSS, the proportion of UK domicile stu taught students who are in highly skilled employability, uh, employment. So this is, uh, employability is also a very important uh, success measure. Then attain attainment gap in degree outcomes between white and black students, and then continuation rate. And at the University of Derby, uh, a decision was made to bring all this skills uh, support under one umbrella, and we, we built the project develop a Derby. And now every student across the from across the university can go to this one-stop shop to get access to all the support skills uh, support uh, they need. And uh, so this is a cross-institutional collaboration. Uh, the aim is to help students develop a broad set of skills in a safe and supportive env environment bolster existing skills and experience, apply those skills in new settings and challenge themselves to, de to develop skills required for future success. Now, there are a few boxes here. I'm not sure you can see very well, but this includes preparing for study, critical thinking, types of assessment, referencing, writing at university, digital skills. So we have a whole team dedicated to digital skills. Your future start now, academic well-being, and uh, among all these things, I'm responsible for maths and numeracy support. Feedback from, from uh, uh, students and also from uh, uh, teachers across the university has been very good. 
because now we have we finally have uh, seen we, we used to have such support developed and provided to students in various colleges schools in like smaller teams but now this is provide uh, provided across uh, the university and this is uh, where uh, my trajectory started to uh, to uh, to move towards uh, this project so i got into curriculum design and digital assessment for uh, mathematics because i had to teach computational mathematics for year one students in computing uh, this included most of the mathematics they needed to know in order to do well in their degree uh, I had a relatively large class, 130, 180 students. NSS feedback with these cohorts was historically about 40, 50%. So lots of students who had to learn, but they were not really uh, happy with that. And even before the COVID pandemic, I took this course on in 2012 and I redesigned it completely. Uh, I wrote a textbook, uh, teaching materials, recordings as soon as they became available. Math jokes, because uh, students are stressed enough, having to learn mathematics, coping with the stress. Um, Einstein had, uh, for example, to say about mathematics, don't worry about your problems with mathematics. I assure you, mine are far greater. And then I tried to comfort the students, telling them that, look, Einstein had problems with mathematics. I had problems with mathematics because I'm a researcher and I always work on some new problem. And don't worry, if you have problems, if you struggle at some point with mathematics, I know exactly how you feel. So I'm here to support you. So uh, for this reason, I developed e-assessment. So I, I developed uh, like assessment for learning. Each uh, topic is assessed uh, using computer-based tests. I had to design about 800 questions. And then re this really turned around student experience in the room, student, uh, student results. Uh, students responded straight away. I really like how we were able to retake the online tests. This became the idea a perfect revision tool because students could because we had such a rich uh, range of questions for for each uh, uh, test each question is randomly sampled from a pool of very similar questions so this means that i assess the students at the end so they know exactly they get feedback on their attempt they know what to revise and then they can practice they can take the test until they get the desired so this is also a tool used to engage the students so students uh, say that it facilitated my learning and comprehension of all the material presented. Then the uh, next year I had, I always, I have some explicit uh, comments as well. So I always sucked at maths, but even in, so even in school, I barely scrapped the C. Strangely, I'm enjoying computational mathematics to the point where I enjoy, I enjoy doing some in the spare time. Then uh, because results were pretty good, I will show you more details about the results, uh, the student results on this course. But this drew the attention of uh, the college. And then in 2018, in March, we had uh, consultations about how to improve student performance, student attainment, student retention in the math intensive modules across the College of Science, of, of Engineering and Technology, as it was at that time. And I was familiar with this, with the impact of uh, such digital tools of so I had like lots of examples of good practice supported by student feedback, but uh, I was not uh, very keen to develop same 800 questions or so for each of the modules in the college uh, that were heavy in terms of maths. But through this investigation uh, on the student results in maths intensive modules, we all realized that quality maths education improves student attainment and performance, not only in mathematics, but we could just feel this. Then uh, it can improve uh, evaluations in NSS and it, it, can, it can support KEF and REF. And it can also boost student employability. So this was like, uh, this was the, the hypothesis after these consultations. And then uh, we designed and we uh, formulated an ambition to provide math support for all students in the university and for all staff. Uh, we created the Maths at Derby community. Uh, we like uh, uh, designer clothes. Like, I mean, we designed with maths logos. We took students, we trained students, we selected students, we deployed them in schools to support maths activities. So we built like a mathematical community because we had very few staff. And this means that our main resource was the students. 
So we train the students so that they can support local schools and outreach events and so on. So this, uh, this means that we also, to provide teaching support, so we, rec we recruited and trained uh, 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 student uh, teaching assistants. Then uh, this uh, uh, impacted outreach activities in local schools. And also the ambition is to support the wider society because uh, we are in the Darby opportunity area, uh, like lots of disadvantaged learners, uh, some poor communities. Uh, we worked with some charities uh, looking after uh, children, who vulnerable children, uh, who could have been um, uh, involved with the drug dealing if they didn't have uh, adequate education. So they were working directly with the children, but we were trying to support them as well with tools. Then uh, we have a range of activities. We have a maths cafe, which originates in the maths clinic at the University of Derby. I had to prepare the Teaching Excellence Framework submission for mathematics. And this is when I was able to uh, discover some of the papers published about the impact of maths clinic at the university. So this is an open session. This is a session booked in the, everyone's timetable. And this is uh, three hours a week. You can get some math support. You go to a room and some maths lecturer will help you. And then I found a paper from 2003 describing the experience of running this clinic for 10 years at the University of Derby. So we realized that we were doing this for a long time already. So I knew that, but then I've seen this paper also. Uh, so we are now rebranding this as Math Cafe. Uh, class interventions and peer learning with student mentors, and also, especially throughout the pandemic, we pioneered the use of Microsoft Teams a few months after it was released for some uh, group uh, project uh, with students. But then we set up a learning community for this maths cafe throughout the pandemic. So this means students could ask their maths questions somewhere we could have, we had on these sessions online, like these maths interventions. But then uh, I mentioned that uh, this project, actually I realized only after I parked the car because it's the same park, park, car park where I left the car five years ago when I attended the British Congress of Mathematical Education in 2018. And at this Congress of Maths Education, I bumped into a gentleman. This is this gentleman, Professor Graham Orput. And uh, he greeted me. Hi, I'm Graham, and my dream is a world where everyone enjoys mathematics. I said, really, that's my dream as well. So let's collaborate. And then I had in mind to organize a workshop on current issues in mathematical education. I had some speakers uh, on my list. And then I invited him as well. I said, Graham, what do you think? Next week, can you come to a workshop? He said, I need to call my wife. And he gave me the answer on the spot. He said, yes, I'll be with you next week. And then we organized this, uh, this workshop where we brought together uh, teachers, researchers from the university. We have a very good group at the at Derby working on maths anxiety. So this is the fear of mathematics. If you ever ask someone, it happens me, to me every day. Today, I spoke to like a school manager and I told her I'm doing mathematics. And she said, oh, I have problems with maths. I had problems with maths. I think in the UK, I think it's a cultural problem as well. And this maths anxiety is the fear of mathematics, which, is, which was uh, proven to be a failure of the nerve, not a failure of the brain. So you are just afraid and then you are freezing, but you are capable to do it maybe, most likely. So we have a whole group working on maths anxiety. Uh, this person was um, an emeritus professor in maths education in Seneca College in, in uh, Canada, but he was also the director of international programs at Vreta. And this was a technology company which was just launched on the UK market. And then uh, when he joined, I presented my research on math anxiety and in impact math anxiety has only only in the UK about only 15 percent of the students take mathematics beyond the age of 16 so a levels in maths and I was mentioning how this impact society and he said yes it's true but actually I don't expect more than 15 20 percent of the of uh, the people to need advanced mathematics and he said, but I can tell you an even bigger problem. And this is that 
not much, nothing is provided for the other 85%. Because like for this 15%, there are lots of smart tools supporting mathematics in STEM, lots of software, lots of programs, but then nothing is done for the other 85% at that time. And this was for me an eureka moment because I realized that, yes, it's these learners who need support as well. And uh, we organized another support. And uh, there is a, their, uh, in, their uh, project was informed by research in Canada, where over a population of about 40,000 students from Ontario colleges, uh, they proved that a third of them were in danger of failing their whole course because of their single maths course. Right, And then that's why, again, my research hypothesis was that if I'm able to support this third of the students who are struggling with maths, then this can make a huge impact at, uni at, uh, at the institution level. Then uh, the research, the next phase of this research was they went to secondary schools to see what was the problem. And then teachers in secondary schools said, these are the materials, these are the tools. We don't feel that uh, anything is missing. But what we find out is that many of the students come with gaps from primary school. And then uh, you have the snowball effect where at the university, sometimes I had to remedy problems from secondary and then in secondary, the remedy from primary school. And then you realize that even students doing STEM subjects, some students understand very well the engineering concepts. They understand exactly forces, they understand how the, how the different complex mechanisms work. But when they have to transform that into an equation that they have to rearrange, then this is where they might struggle. And this is where we thought that we need to, to, uh, to intervene. And also Professor Orpuk, uh coined the term, the numeracy gap. And this is the gap between the current level of numeracy and the level of numeracy required to be fully functional in the nowadays technological society. We did some research and the impact uh, by national numeracy. So you can find some very sobering research uh, by, done by the numer uh, national numeracy. Uh, the, the impact on the UK economy in a study from 2019 was estimated at, two, at 90, uh, 20 billion pounds. So these are just small errors that maybe administrators make in some spreadsheet because the numbers don't make sense to them. They don't, they are not great with problem solving. Uh, in the States, the impact was maybe around 100 billion pounds. And then also this, uh, this uh, study from 2019 highlighted that about half of uh, the adults in UK are not numerate. Yes, and then you want to develop new technologies, new tools, innovation, AI, and so on. Why? Uh, what is the uh, reason for this numeracy gap? Attitudes, I think, especially in UK. Uh, so we have this culture that it's okay not to be good with maths. Don't worry, I'm also rubbish with maths, so we are both rubbish. But you never hear anyone saying, I, I cannot read. You know, I really struggle with my reading. Right. There are many myths, like the mass gene. If you don't have the mass gene, you cannot do it. But how, no matter how hard you try, the, the, the use of calculators, and now we are going to see, uh, even in the slides, the impact of COVID-19. I've seen uh, quite a few studies uh, about uh, the students who missed out on their learning in college or uh, like in uh, secondary school. And I think this will hit us hard at the university as well. And then the technical solution to help the learners in Ontario was this program Elevate My Math, designed around the principles of assessment for learning, flexible engaging assessment, and this was consisting of multiple stages. So first you have, a, you have for each of the courses uh, uh, powered by Elevate My Math, you had to sit a diagnostic test. Then based on the recommendations from the diagnostics, uh, you had to take some upgrading modules presenting you numbers in context. So this is numeracy for adults. It's not with rabbits and so on. And then finally, a summative assessment to check the mastery level. This won multiple awards, including from the Assessment Association. And after I bumped into Graham at the BCME in Warwick in 2018, I said, let's collaborate. I want to have one of your products or two of your products uh, available to my class. They kindly made this uh, available free of charge. 
And I had the pilot project with 300 students from five modules. And uh, some of these students were in my class computational mathematics, but my class was running in two campuses in Greece as well. So I could get access to, uh, and this was like foundation mathematics, foundation year comp uh, uh, calculus and computational mathematics. There were a few uh, basic uh, topics, so ba uh, basic operations with numbers, fractions, percents, ratios, and so on. My main reason to do this was that I didn't. I wanted to provide students with with a self study course. Uh, they could practice in their own time to reduce their anxiety. They didn't have to ask. Uh, Can you please remind me Pythagoras theorem? So if they were struggling with something, they could get the remedy lessons. And uh, I could see, I could, through a dashboard, I could monitor the engagement of the students. So I could get like lots of, uh, lots of uh, data. So I could check the engagement. So with the pretest part, so with the diagnostics, the average was 102 minutes. The engagement with the remediation. So it seems that many of the students actually were, had to take remediation. And then post-test with the summative, there are a few questions, so 46 minutes on average. I could see improvement in, in uh, the student uh, scores between the diagnostic and summative, 14% in mathematics. I expected that to be lower because the students already had a pretty good level with mathematics. Then in year zero, 17%, but in computational mathematics, this was 20%. So this was with the more anxious students. And then for up to almost 40% in the students in Athens in Greece, because along with the um, mathematics, they were also improving their technical English. Skills. Then uh, I tried to make this experience as rewarding as possible. So I designed like certificates for the students. So this was an add-on from us. And then I was able to present the results of this pilot project at the Advanced HE STEM conference in 2019. I collected feedback. So I'm always, I'm always interested to engage with the learners to see what do they actually think about this. And especially students coming back into education after long breaks benefited greatly from this. So I had students who found it very useful after a break of 25 years, and they had to go through the remedies. And then I, I had another student who was out of education for 14 years, and again, he benefited. And this is a timeline of the partnership, because for the next year, after this successful experience, we signed a partnership with the company. So the CEO visited uh, our university. Um, we then we ripped apart their whole resource. We, we, they had about 230 lessons and around those with input from our academics, we designed 12 numeracy training courses aimed at students from psychology, from nurse education. So we tried to really make this available to everyone. And then we developed modular courses uh, and combinations of these courses can be deployed in various places in uh, Blackboard. So we integrated the, the tool with our learning uh, platform. Um, we developed new numeracy, tra numeracy training badges, uh, but now on the open badge factory so that uh, learners can share their achievement uh, on LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, if you want. And uh, in 2021, we had the project sponsored by the European Union and we already had courses available. We had a platform. And then I was presenting some mathematics to motivate the learners to, to care basically about improving their math skills. But then I was putting them through one of these courses, giving them a specially designed badge. And then this is how we were able to upskill the workforce in a few, in, in a few companies and also learning communities. So we reached to the Bosnia Herzegovina Society, Caribbean Society and Romania Society and others. And like every time you have learners through the platform, this generates data that can be used for pedagogic research and for reporting at institutional level. So we refined all these things. And then in 2022, last uh, September, we signed a new partnership for four years with, uh, with uh, the company. And uh, we are seeking international, international expansion and we are also supporting the Rolls-Royce Nuclear Academy. But this tool, because we embedded lessons and our expertise in uh, math anxiety. This means that we could get letters of support for case impact, rec, re, uh, case studies in REF for uh, psychology. So it was not just like mathematics and so on. So this means that based on this collaboration, the company also was able to launch the next ed edition of their, uh, so they refurbished the whole platform 
So this was the launch of the new, uh, the new um, uh, resource, Elevate My Maths 2.0. So this has modular courses, each of them consisting of a few topics. Each topic has now diagnostic remedy and summative assessment. The completion of, of um, so once you complete all these four topics, you can see the proficiency assessment. And then once you complete this proficiency test, you also get, you get the digital badge. We also designed dashboards. This is fully compliant with EDI requirements, with accessibility requirements, because, uh, so this is at the core what they, of what they do. Uh, if I was to develop this, my own resource, to be compliant with all these changing requirements, I didn't have that capacity and uh, the resources to, to do it, but through the company, we can do it, they do it anyway. Now to support, this is how the topic looks like when it's completed. You have a dashboard view and you can provide feedback at a glance to your class. I, I do this every week and in two minutes I have my feedback because looking at this dashboard, so this is the, these are the results from the diagnostics. So in the, in the top row, you have diagnostics. This course, this is the course D1, which is, so in computational mathematics, we labeled these courses from D1 to D11. And I, in the computational mathematics, I'm using D1 and D2. In, for apprentices, they are using D1, D2, D3, D4. So in, in finance modules, we are using D6, D7, and so on. I'll show you the list. But on the front row, you have the results from diagnostics. So I, I see how many students actually completed the diagnostics. D1, D2, D3, D4. Then remedy from one to four, summatives. And then here I have the summary uh, with the results from the proficiency assessment. And I can see that. So looking at this bubble, I can tell how many students engaged. So I have 174 students engaged. Then 117 students have done a very good job. So this means that they reached the final summative. And then 74 students have completed the course fully and they have the digital badge. Now we also produce, so we, in order to make this resource available, we had to produce a math skills guide. So we have a website detailing the contents of all these courses. This is the list. So actually we have a basic numeracy skills. This was the basis for, the, for a massive online open course made available to applicants throughout the pandemic to help them get up to speed with their learning. Uh, this was the basis for the course provided to companies. And then we have fundamentals. So this course, has the maths that everyone across the university needs. So if you study humanities, you can take this one. So it's just like very basic mathematics. But then if you need uh, financial mathematics, if you need algebra and measurement for finance, uh, last year we launched the course for biosciences. So now this will be uh, available from this year to a few hundred students in biosciences. And uh, much of this work was done in partnership with the students. So the students were involved in the writing solutions, uh, uh, looking at the data from the courses. Uh, this year, I, I worked with five students uh, on interpreting the results. And also I had the feedback. This is Steve. I promised him that uh, this, was a present, uh, this is a quote I asked for a presentation at BET in uh, London this year. And Steve is a mature student. And uh, he shared with me that he completed D2, the second course with a score of 85%. And he was very happy with this because he had to start, learn everything from scratch after 25 years break. And uh, this is, I think, the slide which motivated the university to invest for four years into this uh, tool. So these are the results uh, this tool has in my own class, computational mathematics over a number of years. So here I'm presenting the number of students taking the course between 2015 and 2021. I'll show you some more recent data as well. So this is the student numbers. So ranging 168, 122, 180, 159 throughout the pandemic. Then I'm looking at some key metrics. So I'm looking at uh, the first time pass rate. So this is here, I give the numbers, here I give the percentages. So pass rate before 2018, 19, this was like 83, 86%. And the good grades, so the percentage of, of students scoring 60% or above, this was about 60%. This was already pretty good. But then after I deployed this course, pass rate went across the whole cohort to 89%. And for students who actually completed this training, it was 
good grades went to 64% with the completion of these courses, but the most impressive results followed throughout the pandemic when this pass rate stayed at 89%, but for students who actually completed their courses, this pass rate was 98, 96%. Then for, in terms of good scores, they improved massively across the whole cohort to 70%, but for students who actually completed the training, this was 85%. And all this, so most of the students obtained digital badge they could share on social media. And my lesson from um, my key point was that numeracy training can help students build immunity against course failure. So if you get this maths aspect sorted, I think this is a first of uh, morale boost because if you struggled all your life with maths for all sorts of reasons, if you manage to overcome this fear and show that you demonstrate to yourself that you can do better, then I think also mathematics is special as a subject because you have that aha, you know, when you finally get it, I think it's very rewarding. And then I have some recent results. So these are results from this year for a cohort of 128 students. So I think most of them engaged, so 123 engaged properly and then 100 obtained the digital patch. So results as percentage are better than the previous year even. Uh, and this is slightly worse results with the D2, but still uh, better than the previous year. Then here I'm comparing some data. So this is data, more recent data from 2021-22, 2022-23. And this is data on the, on the first column, we have data from University of Derby. So in 2021-22, I had 145 students. And then last year I had uh, 128. And then here I'm showing data from Med College Athens. So these are our partners where they run a course and Med College Thessaloniki class. And also in 2022-23, we launched this uh, project in China as well. So we have a new uh, BSEIT in collaboration with Shenyang University of Technology. And uh, now we can have a look at uh, the results. Uh, so again, pass rates are around 90% for, for Darby. I cannot compare the results yet with uh, those in Athens and Thessaloniki. So I can see improvement in terms of pass rates, but they are not using the, the resource yet in the same way as we are using it. So they are using it just as a prescriptive resource. In my case, it's 10% of their grade. But then this year I was I, I used this fully in China. And there the pass rate was 100 percent In China, different style. Student feedback was also very interesting. So it's the first time we run this uh, this uh, this uh, this course there. So they said, I think it's rich and meaningful. Don't be careless. What they mean is that if you don't get 80 percent in one diagnostic, you have to take all the remedy lessons which maybe you should if you don't get 80%. So this is what they say. Don't be careless because if you don't get 80%, you have to sit and to really spend maybe a few hours on the remedies. Then after training, my ability has improved a lot. I found my shortcomings and improved. You can still improve your ability with more practice. So satis course satisfaction was also 94%. So now we are getting, gathering more data. We are building an insti a cross uh, university-wide dashboard so that we can report all these things and uh, create uh, reports in real time. And this tool, which started in the classroom, actually had significant impact outside the classroom as well, because we could train various communities. So we trained the, the Caribbean community, Sadaka, Bosnia, Herzegovina, Romanian society. This supported the project sponsored by the European Union. We have supported the Rolls-Royce Nuclear Academy, so they are using courses developed by us. And uh, for this reason, last year we've been finalists in the, uh, at the e-assessment uh, awards uh, in the best formative assessment project. Now, this is the footprint of the project. Uh, this year I presented about this project in Ethiopia in January, then in Thailand last month. In China, we are now working uh, with uh, Shenyang. Uh, in Israel, last year, I presented at CAD GME. So this is like digital tools in mathematical education. The project runs in Greece, in Romania. I presented in Portugal next week. I hope to be in, in uh, Sicily, again, for CAD GME 2023, where I hope to get new collaborators on board. 
And now going back uh, to develop a derby. So going, going back to develop a derby, I think this really became a pillar of this university-wide project. And I think one of the key advantages of uh, what I'm selling is not, the, uh, not just the tool, not the products, but uh, what, what I'm selling here is uh, the project as a whole. So I think um, working in collaboration with the technology company, so you can, if you can build your resources, they can have huge impact across the institution. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. That was there was just so much information in there and so much work that you've covered over that time. And great to have those uh, resources available as well for people to look at. Um, just to check if there are any questions. I know that we probably are at time because I know there's another session coming in here. So please feel free to get in touch. Yes. So please get in touch. I'm most happy to pro to make you partners in this project. And I was going to flip that and say I don't have much anxiety because my headmaster at my primary school was a maths graduate, and he was so positive that I actually have mild dyslexia and spelling problems, but not maths. Yeah, <laughs> it's just, yeah I think attitude sense. attitude makes a huge difference. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. so much. That was a brilliant presentation. And uh, thank yeah. you all for joining us for this session. And I can probably hand over now to the next yes. chair or presenter. Or... There we go. Thank you, <laughs> thank you thank so you. much.